And welcome into the Paul Farrington Show. Paul joined by Robert Ziggy Ziegler at the University of Virginia and Zach Bloomquist, the best executive producer in the game. Not a full episode today, but what we're going to do is we'll have a Packers breakout reaction clip and a Lions breakout reaction clip from the Thursday night football game. Detroit coming away with a big victory in Green Bay last night on Thursday night football. Um, so Ziggy, a little bit of a reality check for Packers and Packers fans. We'll, we'll always take that. Now, we know we have a lot of Packers fans who have been listening to our content. And as Vikings fans, we, we have to say it's always great to see the Packers lose, even though in this certain situation, I was rooting for the line, or for the Packers because I view Detroit as more of a threat this year in the NFC North. Where I stand on the Vikings as a competitor, it's really up in the air, if, if, any, if that's being generous at the moment. But we look at this Packers team, and for the first time in 30 years, there, there are some questions about what's going on, where, what their future will look like. Um, the last time Green Bay and Detroit squared off was week 18 of last season with a playoff spot on the line for Aaron Rodgers and the Packers and what turned out to be Rodgers' final game at Lambeau Field. And that night, a lot of Lions fans in the building, a lot of, a lot of really no pressure at all on Detroit because they were eliminated and ev- the whole world was in front of Green Bay. And Detroit beat them there. They pushed them around. They won that game. Kind of similar thing last night. A lot of blue at Lambeau Field. And what we've been saying before the game was Detroit is really good on both sides of the line. And the Packers have been so-so. Their their run game has been really dreadful on both sides of the ball. So we expected the Green Bay run to be taken out. And that put a lot of pressure on Jordan Love to perform. And Jordan Love, speaking of being under pressure, was under pressure all night from this Lions defensive line as well. Uh, it, it made for really Lions bully ball and the Packers being taken out of this one early. What were your original takeaways uh, while watching this one? Takeaway, I mean, if you've got to have one takeaway as a Packers fan, it's the left side of the offensive line needs to be fixed. And it's unfortunate, right? Because they've got arguably the best left side in the NFL when everyone's healthy. But Bakhtiari's out for the season. Probably so you're missing that. Well, he's getting another knee surgery in a few weeks. I mean, Ian Rappaport said that he's out for, he's expected to be out for the season. The focus is on 2024. Man, so tough. So like, he's just hurt so often. And he's so good. It's, it's a brutal blow for them. Yeah. So he's out without that. I mean, it's just difficult to make it work. I mean, Elton Jenkins is another very good player who they're missing. Oh yeah. And the Lions offensive or defensive line, it's not perfect. But it's good. You've got a game record in Aiden Hutchinson. You've got good players around him. So that's bad. I mean, really, if you look at this game, the teams weren't all that different, right? Jared Goff had an interception on the first drive. Jordan Love's first interception was when they were down 17 to three. They had some plays go their way. They had some plays not go their way. The difference is that the Lions offense was consistently good. And this was enough to make up for their mistakes. I don't know. The man. Packers just couldn't get anything going. I see. I I think there was a big difference. And look look at the numbers. Total yards: four hundred one to two thirty in favor of Detroit. Time of possession: thirty eight minutes to twenty two. Rushing yards: two eleven to twenty seven. I thought there was a big difference. I thought it started on the offensive and defensive lines. Uh, Matt Lafleur said after the game. Here are a couple quotes. This is the last thing in the world you want to hear your coach say after a football game. They whooped us pretty good. They manhandled us. We got our ass kicked. It was very humbling. Take it sounds a, like Sean Payton out there. <laughs> take a look at the first half possessions for Green Bay in this game. Four plays, zero yards field goal. That was off the Jared Goff interception. Three plays, negative 11 yards. Three plays, seven yards. One play, interception. Three plays, three yards. Five plays, 16. Finally a first down late in the second quarter. And then four plays, 17 yards going into half. It was... Just an act, I mean, they couldn't move the football in the first half. This Detroit defense had four sacks there again after Jordan Love very early. Uh, and one problem for Green Bay is they keep they kept finding their way behind the chains, whether that was a sack or a negative run. They were setting themselves up with second and long. A lot of times I see the Vikings do that, and they just weren't able to get anything going. When asked about Jordan Love, Matt LaFleur said it's hard to throw when you're on your back. It was just one of those nights. Green Bay, you have to give them credit. They came back and made it a game later. I'm not sure how much of that had to do with Detroit taking their foot off the, off the gas a little bit. But, I mean, the first half, you can't fall behind like this, and it's two weeks in a row now. No, well, so here's the question you have to ask yourself, right? Is the, is the real Packers offense the offense that put up 20 yards in the first half or the offense that put up 210 in the second half? 
Because you'll have to keep in mind, right? This is something I haven't seen a lot of people saying. The star players who are coming back, Aaron Jones and particularly Christian Watson, seem to be getting eased back into action. And even if they weren't, Jordan Love obviously wasn't totally comfortable operating with these guys. So I think there's good reasons to think that that second half offense is a little bit more what the Packers offense looks like. But you're right that it's concerning to come out really slow out of the gate two weeks in a row. And I mean, really, it's the exact opposite of the Atlanta Falcons game where they were really strong in the middle of the game and terrible at the beginning and the end. So you want to see this Packers team put a complete game together. We haven't really seen that from them since they played the Bears, and that might have just been a factor of playing the Bears. <laughs> we talked about that. We said in that week one game, Chicago really imploded. I'm, I, now, Green Bay still played good football, but that the dominating performance was more a result to me of Chicago just being a bad, really bad football team than Green Bay being phenomenal. And I know a lot of Packers fans came away and were saying, like, all right, we got our third guy. Here we go. Another 15 years. Time to slow down a little bit on that. I still think Jordan Love is a good quarterback. I think this team still falls in that third tier of NFC contenders or threats, I guess you could say. They're similar to the Falcons and the Saints to me. Um, It's just when you're playing the Lions now who have made themselves a legitimate threat in the NFC, uh, there is a gap there, and there's, there's a noticeable gap. This might sound a little bit strange, but this game actually made me feel a little bit more optimistic about Jordan Love. And here's why. Really? You know, I've been saying for the past few weeks that Jordan Love was getting pretty good luck and that was eventually going to catch up with him. This game, it obviously did. Right. I mean, we saw that Alex Anzalone sort of tip. He shouldn't have thrown that pass, but also shouldn't have been an interception. The thing that I like about Jordan Love is that he was on his back play after play. Right. I mean, Aiden Hutchinson alone combined for eight pressures this game. Jordan Love was constantly getting hit. And in spite of all that, he kept his cool. You know, he made some bad throws, but like you're inevitably going to make some bad throws as functionally a first year quarterback. He kept his head in the game. He did his best to bring them back. And I don't know. I saw a guy who's able to handle the pressure. If things can just get a little bit better around him, I think he could continue to improve. Oh, I, ex- I expect him to get better and better throughout the season. And he said that after the game, which is what you want to hear. He said this team really hasn't reached their potential yet. We're still kind of figuring th- some things out. Love finished 23 for 36 for 246 yards, a touchdown, and those two interceptions. Another takeaway I had, probably a result of the pressure that he faced all game. It took a long time to see that aggressive Jordan Love. The, the Jordan Love that we enjoy watching as football fans, not as Vikings fans here, because he's pretty good when he's pushing the ball downfield. Uh, But there just wasn't a lot of time to throw, and you couldn't go after Romeo Dobbs. You couldn't go after Christian Watson down the field. That's when this Packer offense is fun. When they're they're just all cylinders going um, and trying to push the ball as far far down as they can, I love watching them sit back and just huck it. Uh, But everyone on the line had given up a pressure by halftime, and all three interior defenders had given up a sack by halftime. You talk about that first half. 27-3, 27-3, you're down. Being out gained 284-21 to 21 in, the fir- in the first half. It, you can't start behind that, that much anymore. It's like New Orleans 17-0. It's been a problem. LaFleur, LaFleur said it starts with him, and it does. Uh, but that's one thing Green Bay has to clean up because you can't. their offense isn't good enough to come back from these big deficits. I, don't, I understand they did it against New Orleans, but it's not good enough to, against Detroit. It's not good enough against better teams in the NFC. So that's one concern for me is uh, when they get behind, like starting these games, you have to start a little bit faster. No, and there's good news for the Packers, right? Their next two games are at the Raiders and at the Broncos. You know, I can't say I'd be excited to be playing primetime Monday night football, but it'll be against two pretty poor teams. This is a good chance for them to start working out the kinks on the offense, try and get players healthy, try and get guys communicating with each other a little bit better. Because, I mean, the Raiders have Max Crosby, and that's unfortunate. But overall, they're not as strong a team as the Lions. The Broncos' defense, I mean, we've seen it's no good. So that's what I'd be focusing on if I'm the Packers. This was a bad game. Things didn't go well. You got to put it behind you, pay attention to next week, and hope that Quay Walker stops taking terrible penalties. <laughs> is, the, is their bye week? So next week, they're, next week they're on Monday Night Football, right? Correct. And, and then, then they have a bye, and then they have Broncos. And, that, and that'll be big for them because they do have a lot of injuries. Some, like Bakhtiari, you know, won't will, will go farther down the season. But Christian Watson, Aaron Jones, those guys who are recovering, it'll be nice to give them a little bit of a rest and a long break between Thursday and Monday night football. 
One more thing about Green Bay that I, I feel like we'd be remiss if we didn't hit on this. It is the ground game. And that was that was what we highlighted. We said, can they run on Detroit and can they stop Detroit? It's going to put pressure on the on on the passing game if if they can. It's going to so when you look at it as a whole on the ground right now, Green Bay ranks 27th in the league at 74.5 yards per game. They had 27 yards rushing, as I said before. And on defense, the past two weeks they've been gashed for 211 yards by both Atlanta and Detroit now. And that's just, I mean, it's been a problem the entire time they've had LaFleur and Gutekunst there is they can't stop the run. And, and some of these teams in the NFC, look at the Eagles, look at the 49ers, look at Detroit now. I mean, Dallas as well, really good offensive lines, and they can just run down your throat. When the, if the Packers want to try and compete, and I know Packers fans don't like sitting around. They don't like waiting for things. They've been spoiled, really, for 30 years. They want to win still. It, you, you can't really compete with these teams if you get manhandled on the line. And that's that would be my biggest concern as a Packer fan is with Bakhtiari hurt now, you, I, I don't know how you can physically match up with the good teams in the NFC. So maybe you just kind of have to pull back your expectations a little bit. Not that saying Packers fans were thinking about Super Bowl, but just where you rank in the NFC might be a little further back than what you were expecting going into this game. The Packers have a terrible combination of awful run defense and awful run game. So like the Packers defense is built to rush passers, right? This is just what they are built to do. But when you're as an offense or as a defense, when you're constantly giving the opposing offense, like second and four, third and one, yeah. that pass rush just can't do anything because Jared Goff just drops back, gets a quick pass out to a guy like Sam Laporta. will just add 20 yards or Amon Ross St. Brown or Khalif Raymond, or like any of the guys on that offense, David Montgomery can put up three touchdowns on you. I mean, David like, Montgomery, David Montgomery's coming off an injury and had 32 carries for 121 yards and three touchdowns. Yeah, meanwhile, the Packers offense is going three and out, five possessions in a row because they just, they start every drive, it seems like, on second and 10 yep. or worse. So I think if the run defense can improve, Weirdly enough, this might help the Packers offense because the opposing offense won't be able to just like score easily, control the ball all game. It'll make it a little bit easier to get that passing game going. Oh, you're gassing the defense too, and it's three and out, three and out, three and out. Yeah, I mean, it's it's miserable. At a certain point, I think the run game is probably just not going to get a whole lot better in Green Bay. You've got talented players. You hope Aaron Jones or age yeah, you hope Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon can produce. But at a certain point, if the offensive line isn't there, you know, Aaron Jones is a great player, but he's not Barry Sanders, right? He can't produce a 20-yard run every single play behind a terrible offensive line. It's tough to see how the run game is going to get better. So they need the defense to step up, put the offense in more favorable positions, and make that short pass game a little bit easier for Jordan Love. Yeah, we'll wrap up this Packers segment right here. Uh, just with our final takeaways, I, I think this team is is good, and that they can they will 100 percent be uh, in that third tier of NFC teams competing for probably a wild card as we get closer to the end of the season. Um, but this was a pretty telling sign to me that there's still a long way to go in this, I guess, competitive rebuild if you want to call it that with Jordan Love. Uh, that's what the Vikings use, even even though it's not all that competitive. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not super down on Green Bay, but in terms of them as a contender in the NFC right now, I am definitely pulling back a little bit, uh, and that's where I fall. I am inclined to agree. I mean, I didn't have them as a huge contender. Here's, I think, it's like we said at the beginning of the season, right? This season is going to have a lot of ups and downs for the Packers. Yep. The goal is to see Jordan Love continue to improve and hopefully have him take a few fewer hits so he doesn't like break his shoulder. Yeah, geez. That's really the thing to watch. That's why I'm not thinking a lot about the defense. That's why I'm not thinking a whole lot about the run game or sort of development of some of these guys on the offensive line. There's a lot of interest there, right? That has some big impacts on the team. But what really matters is can Jordan Love be that guy? Yep. And, and we'll find out more. Yeah, the jury's still out, right? He had some great moments this game. He had some bad moments this game. Like every game this season, excluding the Bears, he hasn't been able to put together a complete game. They need to get things together against the Raiders and the Broncos because after that, they got the Vikings, the Rams, the Steelers, the Chargers, the Chiefs, the Lions. Like Those are games that if they want to make the playoffs, they need to find a way to be competitive in. And what they just did won't cut it. 
Yep. So we'll see. A lot, a lot to look forward to still in Green Bay. There's a, a lot of season left. Don't get too down uh, off of this game, although we'd be fine with it. So thanks for listening. We're going to have a Lions clip coming out as well if you want to hear our thoughts on Detroit.